Hi there, I welcome you to the fourth lecture of the short course on radiobiology. In this lecture, we will look at radiobiological models, mainly the LQ model that is very much needed for the physicist and we'll also touch upon TDF model. The TDF model is the older model and it has been pensioned off, no more being used in clinics, but I do see that in the syllabus of many of the universities. So I have included that here. Let us start with the linear quadratic hypothesis. The cell survival curves show a continuously increasing curvature to start with. And then it is followed by a linear portion. This is what we have been discussing in the shape of the cell survival curve. This has a component of cell kill that is proportional to dose. That is alpha is equal to log E of cell skill divided by dose or I can say log E of cell skill is proportional to dose where alpha is the constant of proportionality and it also has a component that is proportional to dose square where beta is equal to log E of cell skill divided by dose square or I can say log E of cell skill is proportional to the square of dose where beta is the proportionality constant. These two components may progress at different rate that is the linear component and the quadratic component may progress at different rate. To further explain the linear quadratic model, I have got this graph for you. At low doses, two chromosome breaks are the consequence of a single electron set in motion by the absorption of X-rays. Here you can see two chromosome breaks are result of a single electron set in motion. This is the linear portion, which is where the effect, which is the inverse of the survival, is equal, is proportional to dose, right? So this is the region where it is proportional to dose. At higher doses, two chromosome breaks may result from two separate electrons. So as you can see here, two chromosome breaks happen, but due to two separate electrons set in motion. This is the quadratic portion or we can say the effect here is proportional to square of the dose. So this is the linear portion and this is the quadratic portion. We will now look at the quadratic component of it. It is because of two separate ionizing events. Probability of one interaction causing one lesion is linearly proportional to dose as is the mean probability of the second particle doing the same. So, mean probability of both events will become beta d square, where beta is the mean probability per unit dose squared such that the complementary events will occur. In the LQ model, there are two components of cell killing as we saw in the previous slides. One is proportional to dose, that is this region, and the other one is proportional to dose square that is beta d square and which is in this region. Hence the survival not the effect the survival is equal to e power minus alpha d minus beta d square. This is exponential here because this is on a logarithmic scale. As I said earlier s is the survival and alpha and beta are the constants of proportionality in both this. So, in general, the cell survival is described by this equation. Survival is equal to exponential to the power minus alpha d minus beta d square. Where alpha, as I said earlier, is a constant and represents the irreparable damage. Beta represents the repairable damage. Special interest is the case where alpha d is equal to beta d square. If alpha d and beta d square are equal, then alpha by beta becomes the dose d. So the alpha by beta will have a unit of dose gray. This is now referred to as the alpha by beta ratio. If the alpha by beta ratio is high, it is the characteristic of cells with little repair capability, very less repair capability or small repair capability. We have seen it in the earlier lecture also. Low alpha by beta is high repair capability or high potential for repair. These are late responding tissues and these are early responding tissues. This difference in cell survival curves provides rationale for fractionated radiotherapy treatment and explains the radiobiological advantages of fractionation. 
Let us now look at these two graphs that explains the fractionation and the ripper. We discussed the same graphs in the previous lecture also. The number of cells repairing the DNA damage between consecutive fraction depends on the repair capacity, which basically depends on the alpha by beta value. Low alpha by beta value, high repair capability. We saw in the previous slide. High alpha by beta value, low repair capability. So here you can see if the alpha by beta value is small, when you do fractionation, there is lot of gain. Right? Instead of doing three fractions, you do six fractions, the difference in the survival of the normal tissue is much larger. Whereas for high alpha by beta, that is small repair capability, instead of three fractions, you do six fractions, even though the survival is, you know, there is a difference in the survival, the gain is not much between six fractions and three fractions. Whereas in this case, the gain is much more. So if the large the alpha by beta is small and has a large repair capability, the fractionation really helps in the normal tissue tolerance. Let us go back to the survival curve equation and see how we can derive the biological effect. We said survival is equal to exponential minus alpha d minus beta d square. But I have brought the minus outside the bracket. So it is now survival is equal to exponential minus within bracket alpha d plus beta d square. We also know effect is inverse of log of survival, right? So effect is equal to minus log survival. Therefore, for a single acute dose d, the biological effect can be written now e is equal to minus log of survival. So if I put this exponential minus alpha d plus beta d square here in the S, I get E is equal to alpha d plus beta d square. For n well separated fraction of dose d, the biological effect can be n into alpha d plus beta d square, where this d actually represents the dose per fraction. Right? Let us continue to derive the biologically affected dose, otherwise called the BED. In the previous slide, I said the effect is equal to n into alpha d plus beta d square. Now what I have done is I brought the d outside, so it has now become n d into alpha plus beta d. Now I do another small thing that I take the alpha also outside now. So if I have to take alpha out, this will become 1. There is no alpha here. If I take alpha out as common, then I have to divide this by alpha. So now my equation becomes the alpha has come out alpha into nd into 1 plus d by alpha by beta. Because originally there was no alpha, the beta has come down now. So it is d by alpha by beta. Now I got the ratio alpha by beta, right? Here the nd equals to the total dose but I would keep calling it ND, which is the total dose. And you have the alpha here into 1 plus D by alpha by beta. This one, 1 plus D by alpha by beta is called the relative effectiveness. And ND is the total dose. So effect is equal to alpha into total dose, that is ND, multiplied by relative effectiveness, this one. This is called the relative effectiveness. Now I take the alpha to the other side, it becomes E by alpha is equal to total dose that is ND into relative effectiveness that is 1 plus D by alpha by beta. This E by alpha is called biologically effective dose BED. So BED is equal to ND into 1 plus D by alpha by beta. Okay, So this is referred to as the biologically effective dose. From the previous equation, we know that this term alpha by beta has, is an important factor. Alpha by beta is the dose at which the cell killing by linear and quadratic components are equal. For early effects, alpha by beta is large, which means alpha dominates at low doses. The linear and quadratic components are not equal at 10 gray. For late effects, alpha by beta is small. That means beta term has an influence at low doses. 
Values of alpha or beta from multifraction experiments are listed in this for various tumors for early reaction as well as for late reaction. As you can see, for early reaction, the alpha by beta values are larger and for late reaction, the alpha by beta values are smaller. Just as a rule of thumb for alpha by beta ratios, large alpha by beta ratios, that is alpha by beta is somewhere around 10 to 20, early or acute reacting tissues, most tumors, Small alpha by beta ratio, which is about 2 or 3, late reacting tissues, example spinal cord, potentially prostate cancer. Now that we have learned the equation to calculate biological equivalent dose, that is the BED, we will look at a couple of problems. The first problem is, it is a hyperfractionation, where 70 fractions of 1.15 gray given twice daily, 6 hours apart, 5 days per week and the overall time of 7 weeks, right? Now we will do the first problem. We will consider the early effect to start with, which is E by alpha is equal to ND into 1 plus D by alpha by beta, which is the biologically equivalent dose. ND is 80.5, that is 70 into 1.15 plus 1.15 is the dose per fraction divided by alpha by beta for early effect we take an average value of 10. If you calculate you get a value of 89.8. .8. This is actually not an unit but to say that you used alpha by beta for early effects which is 10. Let us now look at late effect. If you do the same calculation with alpha by beta of 3 for late effect you get a value of 111.4. Here it means you used value of 3 for the alpha by beta. Let us look at the second problem. This is to compare with the previous hyperfractionation. But here we are not using hyperfractionation, but we will be using a conventional dose of 2 gray in 35 fractions. In hyperfractionation, we did twice a day, so it became 70 fractions, but here it is 35 fractions. Once a day, 5 days a week for an overall treatment time of 7 weeks as in the case of the previous one. So overall time is same. Instead of 1.15 gray per fraction and doing 2 gray which is 2.3 per day, we are giving 2 gray per fraction otherwise we can say 2 gray per day. Let us now solve the second problem. First for early effects and then for late effects. For early effects the BED is equal to 70 into 1 plus 2 by 10. 70 because 35 fractions and 2 gray per fraction, so the total dose is 70. And because it's early effect, I'm using an alpha by beta value of 10. If I calculate, I get 84. Again, this is for alpha by beta value of 10. For late effects, if I do, I have the same overall dose or total dose of 70. But I use an alpha by beta value of 3 here and I calculate it becomes 116.7. If you now remember the previous one which we did hyperfractionation, we got 89.9 here. Now it is 84. Here we got 101, now we got 116. If you now remember the value we calculated for hyperfractionation and for the conventional fractionation, you will note that the controlled conventional fractionation is not as effective as the hyperfractionation for early effects because it is 7% less. We got 89.9 for hyperfractionation and we got only 84 for conventional fractionation. So it is not as effective as the hyperfractionation for early effects. But it, for late effects, it is much hotter, hotter by 5%. We got 111 for hyperfractionation, 116 for conventional fractionation, right? So, it, conventional fractionation is hotter for late effects, but not hotter for early effects, right? So, this is how this biological effective dose can be used. The other way you can use this biological effective dose is to compare two regimen. If BED is same for two regimen with different fractionation, different dose per fraction, then you say both are biologically equivalent. 
We learned the LQ model in the previous slides. As I said at the beginning, we will look at the TDF model. I have to have the disclaimer again here. TDF model is a very old model as you can see from this slide 1944, the original thing started and it has been pensioned off. I have included it in this lecture only for academic reasons. It is not for your clinical use. But it is interesting to learn. Okay, So all this started with the plot called the ISO effect plot by Strandquist. It's called Strandquist ISO effect plot. You know, look at the year when he did the plot, it was in 1944. He used the standard fractionation of two grape per day over five weeks and looked at skin morbidity versus control of skin cancer. He plotted the ISO effect on a semi log graph where the overall time is plotted on a logarithmic scale and the total dose on a linear scale. So this is the ISO effect for a particular dose and for a particular overall time. Ellis used that ISO effect data for skin from Strandquist plot and proposed that the tolerance dose for normal tissues that is D was related to the overall time. So he used this equation of Ellis, this graph of Ellis and proposed an equation where he said the dose is proportional to overall time it is a straight line. So it's an equation of a straight line in a semi-log plot where dose is proportional to overall time to the power 0.33 where t is the overall time here in this and d is the dose and 0.33 is the slope of this equation. So dose is equal to one some constant into t power 0.33. He called this constant as the nominal single dose NSD. Subsequently they realized Strandquist plot was not for a single fraction and it was for minimum of four fractions. Therefore they didn't want to call this as nominal single dose they prefer to call it as nominal standard dose but the acronym still remains as NSD. So NSD is equal to D into T power minus 0.33. Earlier I said D is equal to NSD into T power 0.33 plus 0.33. Now I have rearranged it. Therefore NSD is equal to D into T power point minus 0.33. This was written differently because they wanted to bring in a fractionation into this equation and also felt the overall time can have only one third weightage of the whole thing. So they split it into t power minus 0.22 and t power minus 0.11. If you multiply these two it will come to t power minus 0.33. In the next equation they replace t by n. How did they replace t by n? I, that is an interesting question. T power minus 0.22 became n power minus 0.24. How did it become like that? They took a conventional fraction of 30 fractions over 42 days. They, re, they had T as 42 and calculated this. And then they had n as 30 to get the same value what should be the power factor. They calculated that and it came to 0.24. So, t power minus 0.22 is equal to n power minus 0.24 if you have t as 42 days and fraction as 30 fractions. The nominal standard dose finally became CRE which is cumulative radiation effect. Let us see how it happened. This is the equation for NSD which we learned in the previous slide. d into n power minus 0.24 t power minus 0.11. The NSD also had a unit called RET. RET is Rongen Equivalent Therapy. Now NSD is equal to D into N. That is the total dose is now taken as dose per fraction small d into number of fractions. D into N into N power minus 0.24 into T power minus 0.11. Now you have N power 1 and N power minus 0.24. So if you multiply what you get NSD is equal to D into N power 0.76 into T power minus 0.11. So 
So the equation for NSD became like this. Dose per fraction into number of fraction power 0.76 into t power minus 0.11. It doesn't stop here. They kept on, kept on making some mathematical changes to it, small, small changes without affecting the value of it. So they changed it slightly and made it NSD is equal to dose per fraction into n power 0.65 into n power 0.11. Why? This is the number of fraction, the 0.76 of the power of number of fractions is split into n power 0.65 into n power 0.11. The reason is they wanted to bring it along with the total time, overall time. So the next equation became NSD is equal to D into n power 0.65 into T by n. They brought this n down, otherwise it will be plus 0.11. They brought it down, it become minus 0.11. So this T by n, that is overall time t divided by the number of fraction n is called the intertreatment time. It was replaced by x later on. So t by n power minus 0.11. That is the intertreatment time to the power 0.11. This became cumulative radiation effect. Let us see how it became. To make NSD additive, cumulative radiation effect was defined. This NSD was not additive because it had a power factor for n. Suppose you had done 10 fractions and you have to do another 20 fractions. You can't calculate NSD for 10 fractions and NSD for 20 fractions and then add it because the n had a power factor. So they wanted to get rid of this power factor. To get rid of this power factor, what they did was they divided by the power 0.65 throughout this equation so that this 0.65 goes off. So let us see now. NSD power 1 was there, right? When there is nothing, it is 1. So 1 divided by 0.65, NSD power 1.538. D had a power of 1 here, 1 by 0.65 is D power 1.538. N had a power of 0.65 and you divide by 0.65, so N has a power of 1. And here T by N had a power of minus 0.11, you divided by 0.65, now the power is 0.169. So NSD power 1.538 is equal to D power, that is dose per fraction power 1.538, into n, that is the number of fractions, into t by n, which is the intertreatment time, to the power minus 0.169. This one, NSD to the power 1.538, was called cumulative radiation effect. So CRE is equal to d power 1.538 into n, into t by n whole power minus 0.169. So now, this is additive for fractions because the fraction doesn't have a complicated power factor like this. Finally, the cumulative radiation effect became time dose fractionation. The CRE is now additive and be, can be used for split course like you do 10 fractions and then do 20 fractions and you can add them and you can also use it for comparing two regimens. Because it includes overall time t, dose per fraction and the number of fractions, it was referred to as the TDF, time dose fractionation. Now TDF is equal to CRE which is equal to d power 1.538 into n into t by n whole power minus 0.169 multiplied by 10 power minus 3. So this is TDF is nothing but CRE into 10 power minus 3 where this 10 power minus 3 is only a scaling factor. Right? It is otherwise you will be looking at a large number, it scales down to a smaller number. Based on the TDF equation, they generate a table for one fraction a week, two fractions a week, three fractions a week, four fractions and five fractions a week, independent of NSD and therefore generally applicable to any tissue. Could be used for partial treatments and for comparing treatment regimens, 
calculating for rest in treatment suppose there is a gap in treatment you can use it to calculate it what should be the extra dose given this table is a TDF table for five fractions a week this table can be used to determine the TDF value for any fractionation schedule or it can be used to compare two different fractionation schedules for example if you decided to deliver 2 gray that is 200 CTY in 20 fractions the TDF can directly be obtained from this table which is 66 suppose you want to compare two different regimens or treatment schedules then you can use this table for example you wanted to do 2 gray in 20 fractions but the patient says I want to go two days earlier so now you want to do in 18 fractions but you want to have the same effect as 2 gray in 20 fraction so what you do first you go to 2 gray in 20 fractions and look at what should be the TDF it is 66 now to get it TDF of 66 with 18 fractions go and look at it must be somewhere here what should be the dose per fraction it is somewhere between 210 and 220 centigrade which will be approximately 215 centigrade or 2.15 gray so giving 2.15 gray in 18 fractions is equivalent to giving 2 gray in 20 fractions so this is how you can use this TDF table one other reason that you would need this TDF table is to determine the gap correction in case there is a gap in the treatment or there is a break in the treatment how we should proceed further that can be determined using this table and of course we need one more table for that which we will see in the next few slides let's let us now do another problem using the table let us consider a situation a standard treatment protocol requires 25 fractions of 2 gray per fraction however we wish to change to treatment of 1.7 gray per fraction but we want to know how many fractions to be given you want to reduce dose per fraction from 2 gray to 1.7 gray but you want to know how many fractions to be given whether 25 is to be given now or it has to be more so how to use the table let us see how do we do it let us go to the table and look for 25 fractions and 2 gray per fraction what is the TDF it is 82 now we have to go and see for 82 TDF with 1.7 gray per fraction what is the number of fractions go to the same table look for 1.7 gray per fraction and go across the table and see what is the value of TDF and where you get TDF and when you see it will be for 32 fractions you get the same TDF of 82 but if you look at 32 into 1.7 your total dose has now become 50.4 gray that's that's understandable because you your dose per fraction is less so your total dose goes higher to get the same effect okay let us now see how the gap correction can be applied using the TDF and what is the equation for that let us assume that the treatment was planned for n fractions with D as the dose per fraction what will be the TDF the TDF will be d per 1.538 into n into t by n whole power minus 0.169 into 10 power minus 3 let us now say the treatment got interrupted after a fraction of n1 now what will be the tdf now after a fraction of n1 the tdf well, we will call it tdf1 the tdf1 will be same dose d power 1.538 but the number of fractions we didn't complete n because it stopped at n1 maybe say 10 fraction so n1 into the overall time is now t1 for the n1 number of fractions so t1 by n1 whole power minus 0 0.169 into 10 power minus 3 let us now say you want to resume the treatment after a gap of tg days so the tdf which we calculated before the gap was td of 1 now the TDF after a gap of TG days will be TDF G is equal to the same dose to the power 1.538 number of fraction remains the same but the T1 overall time you have to now add the gap TG 
So the overall time is not T1, it is T1 plus Tg by n1 whole power minus 0 0.169 into 10 power minus 3. So you have two TDF, a TDF before the gap and TDF after the gap, TDF1 and TDF G. Now the difference between the TDF1 and the TDF G is the wasted TDF due to gap in treatment. Right? Let us see how we get this. The decay factor due to gap in the treatment is obtained by dividing TDFG by TDF1. Let us now look into the how you divide. So TDFG by TDF1 is equal to d per 1.538 into N1 into the overall time for TDFG is T1 by TG by N1 whole power minus 0.169 into 10 power minus 3 divided by TDF1 is d power 1.538 N1 into T1 by N1 whole power minus 0.169 into 10 power minus 3. Here everything is the same except for this factor. Here it is T1 plus G. Here it is T1 divided by N1. Here it is T1 plus G divided by N1. So you can cancel off this to this, this to this, this to this, but only this will remain. So now your TDF G is equal to this into TDF1. Do you see that? So here also I will cut N1 and N1, remove N1 to N1. So TDF G is equal to T1 plus TG by T1 whole power minus 0.169 into TDF1. So this is actually the decay factor. Otherwise, you can also write it like TDF1 is equal to TDFG into T1 by T1 plus G whole power point one sign. So you can write it like this or you can write it like this. You can remove the power factor and write it like this. The most convenient thing they have done is they have given you a table for this also, the decay factor. You don't need to do this calculation. You can get the decay factor from this. If the rest period is 5 days and the overall treatment was for 14 days, then your decay factor is 0.95, that is 5% 5 wastage. If uh, overall time is 14 days and the number of fractions, so the rest period is 10, then you have decay factor of 0.913. If your overall time is 28 and your gap or rest is 10, then you have 0.95. So all these have been calculated and provided to you. Let us now look at with an example how we can apply this gap correction in practice. Let us say you planned for 2 gray per fraction in 30 fractions. Go and look at the table for 2 gray per fraction in 30 fraction, what is the TDF? this is 99. That means you planned to give 98, 99 TDF. But after 10 fractions, that is after 2 weeks, the treatment got stopped. So what is the TDF that at the point of stopping the treatment? So 2 gray per fraction in 10 fraction, you go and look at it, it is 33. That means the TDF given is 33, but you planned for 99, you still have to deliver 66 TDF in 20 fractions. That will come correct. So if you go and see for 2 gray per fraction 66, you have to give 20 fractions. But what happened? There was a gap of 10 days. After 2 weeks, that is after a T of 14 days. So now calculate DK factor for 10 days and 14 days of overall time. You can use this table, you don't need to calculate. So 14 and 10, you get 0.913. So your DK factor is 0.913. Your TDF given is 33, but now that has to be multiplied by the decay factor. So the TDF after the gap becomes 30.12. So before the gap, you had a TDF 33, which means you have to deliver 66 TDF, but now the TDF got reduced to 30.12, which means you now have to deliver a TDF of 68.9. So how do you deliver the 68.9 TDF? There are multiple ways. Let us see how it can be done. You can do two gray per fraction and see where you get 68 somewhere here. That means approximately 21 fractions. The other option is you can give 2.1 gray per fraction and somewhere here 
which is 19 fractions. So you can either give 2 gray per fraction in 21 fractions or 2.1 gray per fraction in 19 fraction which you can consult with the radiation oncologist and do. Again I tell you this is only for academic reason you are not supposed to be using it clinically. Let us look at the issues with TDF model. ISO FX plots of Strandquist are curved not linear as required by the NSD formula. Number one problem does not take into account complex biological process that takes place during or after irradiation. Third, it assumes all normal tissues behave like skin and tumors like squamous cell carcinoma. It is not the same thing, right? And again, most important factor is in the formula, you took N as to be the maximum of like uh, 30 fractions. When you compared N and T, you assumed N was 30 fraction. It is never a 30 fraction. You know, the power 0.244 N will not be the same for all fraction schedules. NSD underestimates late tissue reactions after large dose fractionations. There is no appreciable time factor for late, late tissue reactions. The formula does not adequately account for the proliferation response in handling treatment time. Thank you very much. As I said, I repeat it again. TDF model is for academic purpose. You need to learn the LQ model and much more. There are newer things that have come up on gap corrections that you will have to learn. Thank you very much for patient listening. Again, do the MCQs and before you go to the next course.